the Commodore 64 was one of the best gaming home computers from the 1980s and there are literally thousands of fantastic games that you can play. So let's have a look at some of my favourites. Hi and welcome back to Bytes and Bits. The Commodore 64 is a great machine for games and if you followed through on my last videos you'll have seen how to set up an emulator on your PC so that you can play any game you want. But there are literally thousands of games to choose from. So in this video I'm going to give you a few pointers as to games which I enjoy playing and perhaps you can have a go at them too. So let's get straight into six games to have a go at on the Commodore 64. So first up is a really great shoot 'em up which is called Drop Zone and this is really a Defender clone with a little bit of a difference to it. So you control a man with a jetpack and the idea is to collect up these humans, these little um, round blobs on the ground and take them back to the home base. Now once you have collected all of the humans and taken them back to the base, you then need to kill all of the aliens on the level and that is the level over. So here I'm just carrying one of them at the moment and just dropping them back in there and I've shot the last alien and that is this level over. And then we progress through a number of levels where again we're doing the same process but we have then different types of aliens coming in which we have to deal with. Now if you look at the bottom of the screen you'll see our radar which tells us where all the aliens are. Some aliens, if you shoot them, so I'm just shooting a spore here, you can see it turned into two trailers and I then use the space bar to launch a smart bomb which kills everything on screen. As you then progress through each level the action gets more and more frantic making it a fantastic shoot 'em up. So the next game to have a look at is Mayhem in Monsterland and this is a platform adventure game uh, and really you control a little character and the idea is that you wander around the um, world and various enemies then of course will try and kill you uh, and you can kill them by jumping on top of them and what we're trying to do with this one is we're trying to collect some magic um, dust or some stars depending on what level you're on so if you look down at the bottom of the screen you'll see a magic counter and really what we're doing is we are trying to, as we kill um, various enemies, you'll see that some of them, uh, and this one here, uh, when I go and kill him, you'll see that he turns into a bag of magic. And once I collect that, my magic counter goes down. And the idea is that I now have to go around and eventually get down to uh, having no more magic to collect. And at that point, I have to get to the level exit point which in this particular first level then is a little waterfall which is just somewhere over here and once we get into that waterfall you'll see we get to the end of um, level screen we hand over our magic and we then move on to the next level so the idea is that we've now given the um, dragon enough magic dust to colour in the world so we now come back in and we're playing this Jellyland level again um, but now of course with different enemies and of course it's now in full colour and this one here you'll see we now have a number of stars that we have to collect instead of the magic and that's how the game then progresses and we continually go through and have more and more mayhem in Monsterland. Now I am a fan of shooter games, so IO, this next game, is another side-scrolling shooter and very much in the ilk of R-Type. So again, you fly through a cavern where you're going to have multiple en enemies coming at you. And the idea is that of course you have to go through, you have to kill all the enemies, you have to upgrade your ship and then beat the end of game bosses. Um, but this is a, a very difficult game to play actually. Um, the skill level is is set very high so you will have lots of fun and, and lots of frustration trying to get through this one and beating these levels. Um, luckily with a lot of these games from the Commodore 64 you, they are actually hacked by programmers so you'll find that when you start these games up there's quite a few options to turn on sort of invincibility or infinite lives or upgrade your ship immediately 
And again, that can help you just get a little bit further in the game. Um, but do have a go at it in normal settings and you'll find that you have fantastic fun. Uh, and this is a very exciting shoot 'em up uh, I'll say, um, based on our type and in my opinion, just as good as the original. So the next game is a real change in pace with Manic Mansion. And this is a graphic adventure game where you control a number of characters who are on a mission to save one of their friends from this evil scientist in this Manic Mansion. Now the game is one of a series of adventures from Lucasfilm which uses its point and click um, interface. So really we control with our joystick this cursor, you can see the four arrows on screen. And then we simply need to select commands from the list down the bottom and then select what we want to do with that command on the screen. So here I'm trying to open the door and we can see the message at the top that says it was locked. So I need to find the, how to open this door. So in this one here, what I need to do is I need to pick up the doormat and once I pick up the doormat, it reveals a key. I then need to pick up that key. And once I've got that, I should now be able to unlock this door. So if I use the key in the door, you can see me selecting the various um, options now. At that point then, our man is able to open the door. And then I'm able to walk inside and I can start exploring the actual mansion. So this is the real process that you go through in this game. There are a large number of puzzles that you have to work out to progress in the game um, using this point and click system. And, and that really is where the fun is. It's, it's both exploring the mansion, solving the puz puzzles, then getting further in the game, you've got a number of characters under your control and eventually you'll get as far then as solving all of the problems, defeating the evil scientist and saving the girl. Now whilst the interface may seem a bit clunky by today's standards, um, it really doesn't get in the way of some fantastic gameplay. There are excellent puzzles to solve and it will really keep you thinking for a long time. And you will get a real great sense of achievement as you progress through and get further and further into the game. So really want to have a go. And as I say, do make sure you check out the other Lucasfilm adventure games. And there are a range available on the Commodore 64. Uh, and then they went on to, of course, do those on the PC as well. But do have check them out and have some real fun having a big adventure. So next up we have Impossible Mission, which is a sort of adventure platform game. So you control a character who is exploring these underground um, cave and tunnel system. And inside each screen, there are a number of robots who are trying to kill you with their laser beams or are running into you. And you really have to try and dodge them and then get to various items of furniture and so on and search for clues. So as soon as you get to an item, if you hold down the fire button, you will start searching that item. And then once the search bar gets down to zero, you either find something or not. And of course, the robots are continually searching for you and trying to kill you. So you have various platforms and so on to help you get around each of the screens. And it's all a matter of sort of timing and jumping uh, and so on. So each, each time you search something, you will either get a piece of a graphic puzzle or, or you will then get a passcode. And if you go to one of the computer terminals, if you've got a passcode, you can either disable the robots to get to some harder to reach um, items or, or you can sort of reset the lift platforms um, so that you can get around different areas of the screen. So the overall aim of the game is to search round every room, collect all of the pieces of the graphic puzzles, and then using your control center when you're in the lift area, you can actually assemble these pieces of the puzzles into sets. And once you've created enough sets and solved all the puzzles, you win the game. No. 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 So the last game on my list is Whizball. Whizball is another great shooter game, but this time you've got the added twist of having to collect items using a second character. 
The, the game is set in Wizworld, where the evil Zark has stolen all the colour from the world, making it dull and grey. And you and your cat, Catalyte, have to collect colour droplets to restore it back to its former brilliance. When the game starts, you take the form of a bouncing green ball, and your only control is to move the joystick left and right to add spin to this ball. But when the ball then hits the ground, this spin makes it move in that direction according to how fast the ball is spinning. And this is an incredibly frustrating part of the game where you have almost no control. And your first priority then is to get some power-ups to actually get control of your movement. The, these power-ups, you, you get them by shooting some aliens which will then turn into pearls. You then have to bounce your ball to collect the pearls and then at the top of the screen you'll see some icon boxes starting to glow. And the very first icon box on the left, these are power-ups for your movement. So once that box is glowing, you need to wiggle your joystick left and right and that will activate it. So the first time you activate that first icon, you'll be able to control your left and right movement. And then the second time you activate it, you'll get control of your up and down. So after you've got movement control, you then need to activate the third icon from the left, which gives you this smaller sphere, which represents your cat or, or, or your catalyte. Uh, and this, this then small sphere, it follows you around on screen and it actually adds to your um, fire power. But the main point of that is that when you hold the fire button down, then your main character will stay stationary uh, and firing. And you can then move this smaller catalyte around. And the idea here is that you need to collect colour droplets and fill up the cauldrons at the bottom of the screen with the correct colour. And you do that by shooting these bouncing coloured balls that appear. When you do that, they turn into a coloured droplet. And you then have to collect that droplet using your catalyte before it hits the ground. Each time you complete a level, you unlock an extra level, which you can access by going through the holes in the ground. Once you've completed all eight levels, you restore colour to the world and the game is over. So that's another great, fun and original game for the Commodore 64. So that's a selection of games which I think are worth playing on the Commodore 64. So please do go and have a try out. And again, the whole advantage of this emulation thing is that you can set up your PC and then get access to any game you want. So do have a browse through and have a good bit of fun playing some old retro games. So hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like and subscribe to the channel and do check out my website where I'll give you some links to other games um, and some other game reviews that I've been doing. So have fun with your retro games, keep on playing, and I will see you very soon. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.